Oh, look everyone, it's Beetlejuice. Did you go supernova yet? What about now? How about now? Huh, still nothing, eh? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about supernova. And more specifically, several recent studies that suggested that for the first time ever, we actually have proved that one of the major extinctions on our planet was probably caused by a supernova, or at least a combination of different events that involved the supernova. But we'll also talk about the idea of supernova extinctions in general, and whether we should be worried about them at all. So let's discuss this in more detail. And we'll start with some facts we know about supernova that were to some extent detected here on the planet. For example, we think there might have been a supernova nearby in the last 5 or 6 million years, but we also know that no major extinction ever happened on the planet during this period. One of the previous videos goes through this in a little bit more detail, but in a nutshell, well, the evidence is quite clear. We're detecting what's known as Iron 60, which can only be produced by a supernova and usually only has a few million years of half-life, meaning that this material disappears within only about 12 to 15 million years. At the same time, there are several nearby supernova remnants, very beautiful supernova remnants, which suggest that supernova near planet Earth occurred within the last few thousands of years. Like for example, here you can see the Crab Nebula with the famous Crab Pulsar in the middle of it. And here's what the Vela Supernova with the Vela Pulsar somewhere in there looks like as well. All of these supernova when they did occur were far enough from Earth to most likely not really cause any serious damage, but they may have had some effects on the planet. Some studies suggest that a typical supernova within approximately 600 light years away from Earth might actually increase the temperature on the planet by anywhere from 3 to 4 degrees, but there are also studies that pretty much say the opposite, that the effect is absolutely minimal. In other words, we don't necessarily know what happens when supernova occur. And most importantly, the nearby supernova, such as the one that I just initiated here, which could potentially cause problems for the planet, so for example, supernova occurring within about 30 light years away from Earth, statistically would only happen approximately every 200 to maybe even 500 million years. Which is why the scientists weren't really surprised to discover that a supernova approximately 360 million years ago may have actually killed a lot of animals on the planet. Now, as you can see in this simulation, the supernova that I created managed to heat up the planet really quickly. This was only within about a few weeks after the supernova that occurred at a distance of about one light year away from the planet. So in this case, this would be the extreme type of an extinction event, but this is very unlikely to happen. So anyway, this particular idea is based on two different studies you can find in the description. In the nutshell, these studies suggest that the so-called late Devonian extinction event, which occurred roughly around 370 million years ago, during which a lot of marine life disappeared from the planet, up to about 60% of all of the marine life, potentially was caused by something really, really dangerous happening in space because of the signs they're seeing in various types of deposits and in various types of fossils that were discovered during this time. And the actual visual evidence for all of this comes from the second paper that discusses what seem to be major ultraviolet burns that were detected in various types of plant matter and various types of seeds discovered in the sediment that was roughly around 360 million years old. And although this is not enough to definitively say this was a supernova, because we would also have to discover certain components that usually form during supernova, in this case, this was a sign that the ozone layer of our planet disappeared completely for one reason or another. And one major reason we believe ozone layer can disappear is actually because of a close-by supernova that would produce enough gamma-ray radiation, destroying nitrogen and oxygen molecules through radiolysis, which then forces them to become nitrogen oxides and depletes the ozone layer of our planet. And this depletion can be extremely quick, as we know from the ozone depletion problems we used to have a few decades ago. In other words, it's as if our planet suddenly loses the protection from the UV light, and because of all the other extra radiation coming from the supernova, the planet is then suddenly bombarded by all sorts of radiation, more specifically UV radiation from the sun itself, that then starts to cause all sorts of problems for the life on the planet. Now, not all life is going to be affected equally, but the life that's extremely sensitive to UV damage are usually various types of plankton, 
and also various types of reef builders, both of which, as you might know, are responsible for providing a lot of food for various animal life, a lot of fish essentially, living in the oceans. And if suddenly plankton starts disappearing and all of the reefs start disappearing as well, the entire population that depends on them for survival initiates a kind of a chain reaction where essentially all of the food starts disappearing and the larger creatures can no longer sustain themselves. Which is pretty much what the scientists observe with this extinction event, with the majority of life being affected, not really being the plant life, but instead being the ocean life that's highly dependent on plankton and reef survival. But in some sense, what's really fascinating about supernova is that they're not just responsible for taking away life, we also believe they're responsible for providing life and all of the necessary materials for life on our planet. A lot of the stuff that we have in our bodies, for example, is definitely from an ancient supernova. And many scientists believe that a very specific supernova had to occur for the materials on our planet to be in exactly the same proportions as they are today. So in that sense, they both give life and also sometimes take it away. Although at the same time, this particular supernova could have been responsible for killing up to about 97% of different vertebrates on the planet. In other words, animal life that has vertebra, which back then was still in very, very early evolution. But all of the survivors of that supernova event eventually resulted in the evolution of all of the vertebra species on the planet, including, of course, us as well. What's particularly interesting about this event is that for some reason only the smaller fishes and smaller sharks remained. Sharks bigger than 1 meter in size disappeared and all of the different types of fishes longer than 10 centimeters disappeared as well. At the same time, it took the ancient vertebrates approximately 40 million years before they started to become big again. And this is an indication that back then something did happen to the food source. Because when it comes to evolution and biology, normally when there is a lack of food, you're not going to expect very large animals walking around. Also interestingly, during this period, the trilobites, which no longer exist either, evolved smaller eyes and to some extent this is a suggestion that back then water was probably not as transparent for some reason. So in other words, vision was not as important as it used to be and it took a few million years for the trilobites to start evolving bigger eyes before they too went extinct. But today we still have no idea if any of this was related to the supernova event and if supernova did somehow affect the water for millions of years to come. It's quite possible actually because all of this material that's released from the supernova is going to take around 100,000 years or even longer than that to reach the planet. In other words, even after the initial wave that destroys the ozone layer and after the potential increase in temperature, Around 100 to maybe 200,000 years after that, there's going to be another wave coming that's going to bombard the planet with all sorts of materials, usually radioactive materials. And that is something that scientists hope to discover in some of the sediments. If we do find these isotopes of different materials, it's going to be a telltale sign that supernova did occur and caused this to our planet. Specifically, the scientists are hoping to find the isotope of samarium, known as samarium-146, and another isotope of plutonium, known as plutonium-244, both of which would be definitely a sign of a supernova occurring a few million years ago. And that's simply because none of these materials are produced on the planet, they can only be delivered from somewhere in space from a very powerful event. But there are still a few problems with this hypothesis and a few things that don't really make sense. One of them is that, when you look at the timeline here, there may have been several different events happening within a few million years of each other. If this was a supernova, it either was a multiple event, so in other words, several different supernova happening at once, or it was something completely different. But the scientists at the same time do believe that several supernova can actually occur at the same time, especially when the solar system, and of course Earth with it, passes through one of the arms of the galaxy. In this case, if it passes through, for example, the Orion's arm, which is currently the closest galactic arm to us, there are a lot more stars in the vicinity and some of these stars are very massive. Many of them will go supernova in a roughly the same period of time and if Earth just happens to be close to them, it might actually have a kind of a chain reaction of a supernova after supernova. And as the solar system moves through these arms, 
it basically increases the chance for these events to happen. Which by the way, our solar system is going to be moving through again in the next million years or so. You can kind of see the motion of the solar system across the galaxy right here. And this one orbit takes about 220 to maybe 250 million years. And so in the next few million years, we're going to be inside the Orion's arm once again. And because it will take the solar system about 10 million years to move through the arm, the chance for various supernova to occur here will definitely increase once again. Although because this is still in really really far future, we don't really have anything to worry about right now. There are more pressing concerns on the planet. But in a nutshell, that's pretty much it. That's kind of what the scientists discovered in the last few months, and it does make a lot of sense. Essentially, the discovery of these burned fossils that were approximately 360 to 370 million years old suggested that a lot of life in the oceans, specifically the life that other life depends on, may have gone extinct because of at least one and possibly even multiple supernova occurring one after another. This stripped the Earth of the ozone layer, this possibly also affected the oceans in some other way, and it also destroyed most of the larger complex life on the planet. Including some of the first animals that tried to make their life on the surface, like this little guy known as Tiktaalik. But we still need a little bit more evidence to definitively say if this was indeed a supernova. And only future studies and future discoveries will be able to tell us if this was the first official proof that supernova did indeed cause a major extinction event on the planet. For now, I can only say that this is a hypothesis, but with a lot of strong evidence. Once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video, but for now, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, check out the papers I mentioned in the description below, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.